Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. This video will be a little bit different and I kindly ask you to have patience and watch it till the end. I promise you it will not be long. However, this is a discussion that we need to have and the discussion is around sponsoring or making sustainable OSS. It's clear that this video is a follow-up of the video that I did on Wednesday regarding the entire Mokyo situation. So if you're not 100% aware with what happened, then I kindly ask you to go to the video and watch it. You will find the link in the description below or in the corner up right right now. First of all, I would like to briefly explain why I did publish that video. So the changes that came with the new Mokyo release could cause potential GDPR issues for a lot of us. And that's why I thought that it is a breaking news and something that I would be responsible to also transmit or inform my audience about because it could place you in possible situations of liability, both from a legal point of view, but also from a financial point of view. So this is why I wanted to avoid it and make everyone aware of a potential issue that we might have with the Mocu library. However, in that video, I still encourage people to go and sponsor the Mocu library. So it was not just a lashing out towards the author of the library itself. So why this follow up in that case? Well, because people tend to totally miss the point on why exactly everything came to this entire situation. To make it clear to everybody, let's just do a short exercise of imagination. So imagine that you write an own library and imagine that your specific library gets half a billion downloads. Your library is the news in a lot of software, in a lot of companies that generates millions and millions on, of revenue for those specific companies or individuals. So how would you feel about that? Because I would personally feel very, very frustrated. And this is a common pain for really all OSS authors in the .NET ecosystem at least. That's why I totally understand and get the pain or the frustration of the Mocu author that ultimately made a decision that was probably not the optimal one and a decision that I personally totally disagree with. So I would like to take this occasion to also make everybody aware of the fact that OSS authors also need to have a kind of compensation for the work they are doing in the .NET ecosystem, especially if they develop packages that are used in a lot of companies generating a lot of revenue. What I usually do at the end of each year without doing a video or talking about this is that I contribute and I sponsor libraries that I have used in the videos and that have generated me revenue. But since I think that now it is a great opportunity to draw attention to this specific issue, I have decided to actually make a video on this. And in this video, I would like to go you through all my entire process of understanding exactly how much revenue did certain libraries generate me and then pay back or share some of that revenue with the library authors. As you know, I'm not really a big fan of using libraries just for the sake of using libraries. So that's why in my videos, I don't usually talk about a lot of different libraries. But one of the libraries that I have done a video on was this Fluent Validation Library. So let's take a look together in my analytics. And since this video was published less than one year ago, you see that it generated me $10.54. Now what I usually do is that I take 5% of the total revenue and I share it basically that 5% that with that specific library. Now 5% from $10 is not really much, but still I would like to contribute to the Fluent Validation Library. So here's the GitHub sponsor profile of the author of this Fluent Validation Library. And what I will do is I will have a one-time fee and I will donate $5. So let's click here on select with this five. And obviously here there are some of my details that I would totally gray out or well hide. But then one important thing that I always do when I do sponsor, I always do it privately. So I don't really want people to publicly see that, hey, I have sponsored this and that. That's a matter of me taking responsibility and accountability and making sure that I share something back from my revenues with the corresponding library authors. And then I say here sponsored and voila, the sponsoring is already done. Another library that I have used in my videos is this EF Core Exceptions. So let's go here on this video and the analytics also, it's a fairly new video and it only generated me $4.70. So in this case, let's also donate here $2. Now here, unfortunately, I don't have the possibility to donate only $2. But you know what? I will just also use this $5 one time and then click on select. I would also like my private, my sponsorship to be private and then I will sponsor it. There's another library that I have made a video recently, which is 
the Refit library. And here in Refit, you see that it generated me $4.26. And this is the sponsor profile of the Refit library. So what I'll do here is I will do use half of what I have earned so far and I will click to sponsor it. Once again, I will do this on private and I will just sponsor the Refit creators. And now comes the library that generated me the most or the author that generated me the most revenue. And this is obviously Jimmy Bogart. So I have here a lot of videos where I have used, for instance, Automapper. And the most popular video on my channel is basically this Don't Use Automapper. And it's also less than year, one year old. And you see that it's already generated me $126. Also from Jimmy Bogart, I have done a lot of videos on Mediator. And probably one of the most popular videos that uses Mediator is actually this one. And this generated me $35. Now, I won't go through all the videos that I have created on Mediator and Automapper here in this video, but I have done a calculation and basically all these videos on Automapper and Mediator generated me around $336. So let's move over to Jimmy's sponsoring profile. And what I'll do here, I will just take $16 because that should be around 5% from what it generated to me. And I will then also click here, select, keep everything private and then sponsor it. Before we wrap this up, I want to go once again back to the mock situation. And once again, this is one thing that I wanted to keep privately, but I think that it might be important in this case to make it public. So immediately after I have uploaded and published the video on Wednesday about the Mercury situation, I felt a lot of empathy towards the author of this library. So what I have done is basically I have made a one-time sponsorship of $50 to the Mocu author. And I have done this even if I haven't created any single video that uses the Mocu library. So at this point, I would also encourage you to maybe considering donating or sponsoring $1 to the Mocu author. It would be a sign of appreciation for his entire work that he has put into this great package that has helped a lot of developers throughout the entire .NET ecosystem. And that's mostly it. And this is one thing that I usually do every end of the year without creating a video and without telling anybody. However, in this case, once again, I created this video because I would like to strongly encourage you, everybody that watches right now, to take a moment and understand exactly what are the libraries that you have used the most and eventually consider sponsoring them. If you got some revenue from products or from applications that you have built using those specific libraries, then I think it's kind of like your accountability and responsibility towards the author and his or her mental health to also contribute to that library and sponsor it even with $1. At this point, I would also like to issue a challenge for all my fellow YouTube.net creators to create videos similar to this one and to encourage their audience to do exactly the same and sponsor the OSS packages that they use the most. I'm sure that most of the creators already do this without telling you or without telling anybody that they are sponsoring. But if you know or if you watch other channels that do .NET content, maybe just leave a comment on their channel and say, hey, on Code Wrinkles, there's a challenge for you if you want to do a video on this topic and maybe maybe encourage your people to sponsor to OSS projects, then feel free to do that. And I would totally appreciate that. This being said, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and if you think that it's useful and it is a useful discussion. And if you are for the first time here on this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get always notified when there's something happening on this channel. And if you have any comment or if you want to contribute to the discussion about sustainable OSS, feel free to go down the comment section and leave your comments there. I would be more than happy to get into a discussion with you about this specific topic. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.